But whenever this person invades your personal space and calls your mom, indicating that, you know, you, of course, know their real name and their phone number. And their address. And, and, yes, and, and their address. And my brother and my father and me and my mother. And you're bragging about all this shit. Yes. It's like, I'm not, I'm not. You have to think like a crazy person who is willing to escalate a bad Elden Ring review into doxing someone else's it's family. It's not unreasonable to think that that person would not escalate it even farther. Exactly. And, and, and like that's and, happened before. We... Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to Whoa. the stream. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Wow, this is so surreal. Oh, yeah? Yeah, now now yeah. you're in the reaction video, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I uh, I know this has been, like, a big thing. Like, and when I think about it, like, when was the first video, like, that this happened? Like, the worst Elden Ring hot takes two months ago. Yeah, the uh, uh, Mischief made his first video on Quantum, I think, like, mm -hmm. March 13th. Uh-huh. So, so it, it goes back to March, and then... You know, there's the whole copyright strike business back then, and then, yeah. So it goes back a while. So it, 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 we are in the final saga here. We we are in you, you, season four of Attack on Titan. You know what I mean? So you feel like things are they're building up to like such a place that it's like it can't go any farther than this. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think YouTube can make it any more terrible decisions at this point. It's kind of hard to at this point. I, uh, I agree with you. And so um, just for anybody who, who doesn't understand, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, effectively what happened for anybody who hasn't been caught up with this is that um, uh, basically there was a guy who made a video, his name's Quantum TV, about uh, Elden Ring. He said, uh, did he, I, I, I want to, correct me if I'm wrong about this, did he ever play Elden Ring? Um, fun fact, in his five Elden Ring videos, he yeah. never once showed any gameplay of him playing Elden Ring. So that's a no. I think he did. I think he did, but he was probably so ashamed with how fucking terrible yeah. he was, he didn't yeah. want to show the gameplay. That's probably a good idea, because anybody that would see it is like, oh yeah, I wonder why you don't like it, uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like the first guy in the Elden uh -huh. Ring Hot Takes video who attacked uh, the guy at the start and was like... He kills me of one hit. Yeah, yeah you know, and, and you know exactly what he did. Is he opened up that thing? He tried to hit the NPC. The NPC kept killing him. Finally, gets around the NPC, fights the fucking Sentinel once, dies, and then he writes his fucking review. <laughs> He's like, "Well, that's a wrap." Yeah. All right. Well, this game sucks. That was easy. So yeah, um, this guy, uh, Quantum TV, makes this video, and then Mischief makes a video uh, making fun of uh, his Elden Ring opinion. And, and I think that, like, in general, there were no real personal attacks in this video, uh, no real threats or anything like that. And, and then Actman makes his video, uh, the worst Elden Ring hot takes. And this was the first video that you actually talked about Quantum, right? Yeah, there was a couple other guys that, um, so an unsung hero of this that I meant to shout out mm -hmm. in one of my other videos was for Tanga Plays, because he made the, the the video after Mischief, and then Review Tech USA, uh -huh. and then some other guys, and then I was I was the one that, you could argue, kind of blew the hot takes yeah. up, and then he copyright struck me, and then... So Quantum like, oh, sent okay. you a copyright strike right after you did the worst Elden Ring hot takes? Yeah, it was about uh, three days after the video went up. Holy shit. And did he try to contact you or anything before he nope. sent? He just fucking shoot first, ask questions later. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and you feel like he didn't even, and, and I've, I've made this clear, I agree with this, but um, he didn't even really try to look into whether it was fair use or not. He just saw his content being presented and that was it. Yeah. He tried to, he tried to twist it around to kind of be like, you're stealing my content. This isn't right. this isn't fair use. But I think that was just his excuse to silence criticism about him, which is like after looking into the AV community and like a bunch of smaller it's tech audio channels, video, right? And that that's like yeah. that's what he usually does. Okay. That yeah, that's what he's done to other uh, other content creators like way before any of this shit. Yeah. Because Elden Elden Ring just got it to blow up, but like he's been doing this kind of thing. Like, oh, you talk shit about me, or or my TV settings. Well, I'm gonna strike you. Oh, yeah. And he's okay. done that like four years ago, two years ago. So he's weaponized copyright strikes in the past, even in cases where it would be almost impossible to not claim fair use. Yeah, okay. pretty much. 
So then after after all this happened, uh, you went through and you and a m- bunch of other people, as soon as your video came out, looked through a bit of his past. And um, that was kind of shocking, if you want me to be honest with you. Like some of the stuff that he said, it's like this is like he doesn't want to be part of the um, gay Satanist butt <laughs> sex agenda. <laughs> That's a lot. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. Oh my god! He t- I mean, and like for somebody, um, you know, it's something like doth protest too much, right, or something like that about uh being guilty of something. I I, I find that to be a bit odd. And um, also, he's accused you or other people of sexually harassing him by photoshopping cucumbers around his mouth. Yeah, uh, I I'm I'm. I apologize to anybody watching in the audience that is, uh, you know, young. You know, we're talking about extremely sexual things right now, like cucumbers yeah. poorly photoshopped over someone's mouth, not even in his mouth. So, uh, yeah, I hope you your audience done a is much prepared. Job. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was kind of the point. It was like a, it was like a one minute edit, like yeah. Um, but uh, the reason I did that is because he had a clip of him tr- trying to call Review Tech USA like a porn star because there's an image of review tech usa with a cucumber in his mouth and he was like wow look, you're sucking on cucumbers in such a provocative way and that's why uh, i just again. like did, i just i just turned the tables on him uh, <laughs> but they're like he didn't like that at all no he didn't <laughs> like that one bit yeah i i certainly am not surprised and so uh you basically whenever you uh you basically contested this copyright strike that quantum initially put on your channel and so what happened between you and YouTube whenever that happened? I actually didn't have to contest anything because when I when I checked my email, it was like, hey, we've got a copyright takedown notice, but we want you to know that it's, it's bogus. Bullshit, so yeah. we're not. Yeah. So we're not taking the video down. And then I was like, oh, shit, he actually he actually tried that against me. And I was like, oh, buddy. You yeah. opened a new can of worms. Yeah, exactly. It's just crazy. And um, anyway, so this had happened, and this was a, this was kind of a turning point where you actually made the second video about this, where you kind of went through and explained a, a little bit more about his past and and like things that he had posted before. Uh, is, is that yeah. right? This is this is when I was like, okay, he's tried to strike mischief he's tried yeah. to strike me what what else has he done because this seems like a guy that is and i i saw that he had been in the comments of other videos and like threatening legal action and litigation and like i don't want to crush a uh, crush a smaller channel with litigation and take down this you know thumbnail that has my face in it otherwise i'll issue a strike and i saw this and i was like this is someone who's clearly weaponizing dmca's to silence criticism about him. So I'm pulling no fucking punches this time. Of course, yeah. I, I think that yeah. the, one of the things is like DMCA's and copyright strike abuse is the one thing that everybody on YouTube agrees on that they just universally fucking hate. That's the only thing in my opinion. I think that like everything else people argue about and fight about, uh, etc. But it's like you get more of a, um, I don't know really what to say about this, like a, um, a consensus about DMCA strikes than you do about if the earth is flat or not. Yeah. Everybody yeah. agrees on this. Yeah, which is kind of nice that like everyone, you know, I've, I've kind of been talking about this uh, here and there. But, you know, as a community, we need to figure out this copyright abuse thing and enforce punishments against people that abuse DMCAs so that we can all go back to hating each other like it was. Well, yeah, you know? that was, those were the good old days. And, and I think that that's the thing is that most people would probably agree that if you falsely issue a DMCA strike, your channel should just be taken down. Like, that's what I think, at least. Is I don't it, know about, about totally being taken down. But you're right, I think there's nuance it, to it. You're right. Yeah, it, 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 if it's like one time, maybe you get pissed off. Like I, I'm against the idea that one, one big mistake. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say Quantum just issued the strike against Mischief, and that was it. And he learned his lesson, and maybe he got a copyright strike himself for issuing false strikes, and yeah. he didn't do it again. Like Uno reverse. Yeah. yeah, but then you add into the fact that he's in comment sections every day, threatening litigation, threatening legal action threatening more strikes and copyright claims and he's doing this to other people and he's done it to to people in the past once you add the context of like okay this is not an isolated incident 
then yeah, your channel should be deleted because you're a plague on the community and you're threatening people's livelihoods. Yeah, I think so. And, and like speaking of threatening people's livelihoods, at what point in this video saga, uh, just for the audience that's catching up to this, uh, what point of this did Quantum, uh, I'm assuming, uh, go online and find your personal information and then n call your mother? So I'm not entirely sure when he did that. He may have uh -huh. done it before uh, or, or after the worst Elden Ring hot takes, but yeah. he, call he called my mom... 42 minutes after the copyright abuse video went up now that video is 31 minutes long so he, he had time the whole to thing and then he just went right to yeah it. well he finished the video you know maybe took a nice shit yeah uh maybe got himself a little snack and then called my mom and, and so like what did he say to your mom that made you feel uh like it was a threat besides the fact of just contacting her in the first place which in my opinion is completely over the line yeah, it was kind of just like intimidation tactics and the way he was talking to her yeah. is just like anytime I, I was like, man, should I press through with this dark age of YouTube video? I went back and I would just listen to the way that he talked to my mom and I was I would just get this fire inside me like, fuck it. I'm going to work. I'm going to work 14 hours on this video today. And, and you, you said, know? yeah, and you said on your thing that if he ever came on your property, you'd shoot him, right? Or threatened you or, or yeah. like that. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I, I and and there are some people that criticize this. Um, I'm not really sure what state you live in, but I'm in Texas. I think that sounds just about castle right. Castle doctrine. Yeah, castle doctrine. That's right. I think it sounds just about fucking right. You threaten somebody's family. You you take things into the real life sector, and uh, you better expect that's going to happen. I think that's what should happen. And so yeah, yeah. I I completely support that. And um, you obviously sent some of this stuff to YouTube and you tried to get, uh, when was the first time you tried to contact YouTube directly uh, about Quantum? Um, I think, uh, I think it was after he tried to copyright strike the Elden Ring hot mm -hmm. takes video. Cause it, the copyright abuse came out like maybe a week or eight plus days later. And so I was basically in talks with YouTube for a bit and they took my statement and I gave them a handful of links and then they would mm -hmm. said they'd investigate it. And then a few days later, they came back and they were like, OK, yeah, we didn't find any community guidelines violations. And so I was like, OK, well, I'll just have to go balls to the walls on this. And one that's whenever so that you so you that was the picture that you had posted on Twitter. And it was showing basically that, like, yeah, we've looked into it and we didn't find any sort of. uh uh, any sort of violation, right? And th that's whenever they said that if you call them, uh, that they're not going to reverse the decision. I is that effectively it? That that was the very last time. Oh so, my god, so this is another yeah. one. Yeah, so that was the very last time. I waited to drop the news that they weren't going to do anything until uh -huh. my video, The Dark Age of YouTube, was close to completion. Right. Because I wanted Quantum to feel victorious for the shortest amount of time possible. Of course. Yeah, so, so his ego is not uh, getting larger and larger, yeah. Yeah, there was basically three three investigations mm -hmm. that YouTube apparently conducted. The first one was kind of a short one, and they said, yeah, no community guidelines violations. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to ch remove all doubt. So I spent like eight hours the next day compiling this big, uh, what I call a dossier, uh, like 3,500-word document, uh, outlines all the harassment the copyright strikes images i linked to videos of other people talking about it basically this huge fucking document yeah. and i sent it to youtube and again they were like yep no no community guidelines violations and then i was like okay but here are three videos of him encouraging his audience to to look up my personal information he has a phone call that he himself published where he's talking to my mom like this is clearly not okay and they were like well so did nope. YouTube ever explicitly like kind of condone that or did they just not address that specifically? They did not address it at all. And do you think that YouTube actually looked through the evidence? Like basically what I'm asking is like, do you think this is an instance of YouTube choosing not to act or basically incompetency taking the wheel? Um, I feel like this is... In my opinion, it's it's like pure incompetence. 
because yeah. I don't I don't know what they looked at on their back end. I can only assume that the the only stuff they looked at was the stuff that I sent them. Right. And I don't I, they didn't tell me about anything they looked at on the back end if if like how many other copyright disputes he's been in or why his previous channel was banned for hate speech, what kind of things he was talking about. I they didn't tell me shit. Well, and, and he had intentionally tried to obfuscate and make harder to connect his old channel with this new channel. Is that is that right? That was the quantum oh, yeah. apotheosis one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so like, I, how, have how a, did, I have yeah. a video. I have a video feed someone sent me of them going through uh, like his old Facebook posts, and and that's really important because you can actually see him linking a lot of like really fucking weird titled videos, like heterophobic gay pride exposed episode yeah. three hundred and thirty seven. That's halfway through. <laughs> you know, so he, like, what I find really crazy is we don't even know like what kind of shit he was saying on the quantum apotheosis channel. You know what I mean? Right. Like this is just the shit that we found in the in the Facebook posts and the uh, the tweets and stuff. So it's like you don't really even know how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yeah, we can only we can only assume. So how much of that evidence is actually on his platforms at this moment? Like if you go to his Facebook page, or his Twitter Facebook or is his Facebook has been privated, I think, and his Twitter has been deleted. So it's none of it is there anymore. Okay, so it's uh, all at least, completely gone. At least publicly available. There, of course, is the Wayback Machine, right. which if you have links to his Twitter and Facebook, you can kind of look into that there. But we also have, like, video feeds and stuff. Okay, so basically, like, you, you've already looked through all of this stuff, and YouTube, whenever you provided that evidence to them, effectively what they said was that it wasn't enough. This is like, well, we don't really know. It could be... They think that you faked basically everything. Is is that right? I, I can only, I can only assume what they th they thought. Um, it's it's just strange that you know with the amount of evidence provided, it's like okay, let's see if these screenshots were faked. The thing about Quantum is if you try to dispute one thing about him, yeah. Like let, let like let's say people were skeptical about the the gay liberal satanic atheist agenda post. Let's right. say you're skeptical about that. Sure. You can you can look at six other things that corroborate that statement. So I, I think you that's can, kind of and that's a big point because obviously uh, people have brought up previous tweets that you've made uh, where you use like the uh, homophobic f word etc. And there's not really a lot of corroboration to show that this was actually done with malice and it was just more so done because that's just how you were talking then. And you, you don't really use those words anymore. You don't say, you don't talk like that anymore, do you? I mean, it's, it's like, I didn't treat my platform. I treated my platform back then. Yeah. Like, like I was stubborn in the sense that I thought, well, my social norms and the, and the social norms that I grew up with should also extend to the internet. Right. Yeah. And that was I, rather I foolish, but, yeah, but you but you learn and you move on. The thing the thing that I always find interesting about those those tweets that they share, it's like that's the only fucking thing they have. And so yeah. there's it's like, yeah, I moved past that like like you know, I'm not saying the same shit if you all that shit was from 4 or 5 years ago and I haven't done anything similar to that since grown and moved on. Yeah, but, I, I think know. it's it's clearly not a um, this is not a pattern of behavior. It's not something that like, for example, uh, with quantum, this is something that was reflected over years. And also, like, I, I do think that there is a very big distinction between somebody who uses a slur and somebody who uses a slur with malice behind it. And they yeah. also have like more like they're talking about those people that it refers to. And they're hoping that they get shot. Like, I, yeah. I, I find this to be a disingenuous comparison. Yeah, I, I like the term you make, you make uh, intellectually dishonest. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, you can... Saying, saying a slur or calling your buddy a slur is not the same as wishing death on groups of people based on intrinsic things they can't change That's about themselves. It's categorical under that slur. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like using using slurs directed at someone. 
And even in those old tweets, it, it was never directed at someone in particular. Right, right, it yeah. It was always, like, just kind of me being edgy and obnoxious. So, Yeah, you know basically what I mean? it was edgy, but it was not done with actual malice or ill intent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so besides that, and uh, YouTube, was YouTube aware of this? Did they say anything to you about, like, your conduct? Because clearly what happened is that YouTube had sent you this message, and how many times did you correspond back and forth with YouTube leading up to the point where they demonetize your channel? Uh, let's see. I had probably 30 emails with a liaison oh for the copyright and community guidelines teams. You want to know something that's really funny? I haven't, I haven't actually shared this. Okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't share this in the video. Let me see. Um, yeah, so in the very first email where they said, uh, I want you to know we have completed a thorough investigation. So this is April 29th. We have completed a thorough investigation of the videos you flagged to us. At this time, we have determined the videos do not violate any of our community guidelines and therefore do not warrant any action by YouTube. So at this point, I had already linked the videos, I, I believe, of him doxing my mom. Right. So they, they go on to say, we take these allegations seriously and want members of our community to feel safe when they are on our platform. Please report channels or content that you feel violate YouTube's harassment policy. Here's the funny part. We'd also like to convey and reinforce the responsibilities of creators on the platform as their audience and influence grows. Creator responsibility is of utmost importance. Statements like the ones you made on your Twitter account can be very harmful. You have a very large audience, and with that growth comes the responsibility of being aware that your statements targeting other YouTubers can often lead to targeted harassment. So this was in regards to me saying, if you show up on my property, I will shoot you. That was in regards to the to the tweet did, after he had doxed my mom. Did they refer to that tweet, or are you assuming that? Yes. Yeah. No, that's the that's the tweet that they were they referring explicitly to. referred to the tweet, and so they said that you saying that if the guy showed up at your property, and and again, uh, I want to provide some context for this because this might sound like randomly telling a person that you will shoot them over an internet beef is very clearly a bad thing, uh, but whenever this person invades your personal space and calls your mom, indicating that. You know, you of course know their real name and their phone number, and their address, and, and, yes, and, and, their address. and my brother, and my father, and me, and my mother, and you're bragging about all this shit. Yes. It's like I'm not, I'm not. You have to think like a crazy person who is willing to escalate a bad Elden Ring review into doxing someone else's. It's family. not unreasonable to think that that person would not escalate it even farther. Exactly, and, and, and like that's and, happened before with people online. Yeah, I mean, you saw the the boogie situation. Yeah, with uh, Frank Hassel, I remember that. And, and so, yeah, I and and I want to just say, I mean, I've said this multiple times, right? Is that I think that's totally fair. Uh, I do. I and and like maybe this is an American take, and if it is, proud to be an American. Uh, if somebody comes into my space or something like that, um, they just. Uh, I think that, that, you know, you put your wife on the line whenever you do that, especially in a malicious way. I, I think that's completely fair, especially whenever it's somebody who seems unhinged you know, with like a lot of his other posts, etc. This is not oh, a person yeah. who is of a sound mind. So it's like exactly. you never know what a crazy person's going to do. Yeah, like I'm we're not going to take chances. I yeah. uh, I liked what you said in, in I think one of your videos or one of your streams. You were like, if you don't want any problems, just don't go into other people's houses. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, if you don't want to get that's shot, it. just don't. Just go go into somebody else's house. Exactly. And I think that's totally fucking fair. You're gonna fuck around. You're gonna find out. You know. That's it. And I think it's totally fair to do that. And um, also, I think that YouTube is. It's ridiculous for YouTube to uh, uh, to tone police you on that, especially. So um, did, oh, the, to ahead. overlook it entirely. Yeah. It's like. You saw you saw the montage and your reactions. Well, it, like, wait a second. So it actually, like, by the nature of them acknowledging that tweet, they would have had to it then acknowledge the fact that Quantum doxed you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I could. Yeah, like that. That's logically like what it would be. Like maybe they just looked at it in a vacuum, uh, but I, I think so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I don't know how you could be so detached from the the situation to 
see that and be like, hmm, why is this statement being made? And it's the same thing with like yeah. the uh, the doxing adventures with Actman tweet, the tweet that got me completely demonetized. It's mm -hmm. like, it's hard to feel like there's not something malicious going on when it would have taken like five minutes to reach out and be like, hey, are you serious? And I would have been like, no. So that Get a was sense the, uh, of humor next time. So this Get is, a sense of humor. Yeah, this is the tweet that you made about doxing the uh, the, the YouTube employees. Is that it? Doxing and harassing yeah. families. And, and to be fair, I've said this on stream, that was a bad idea to tweet that. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, bad idea. Uh, definitely. And so uh, this was clearly not s serious. And I think it's completely fair that um, YouTube could maybe want to take action against that. But in, in my mind... Uh, you doing this is existing separately from quantum TV existing, right? So like, yeah. even if you, you do know what this a, and they just, you know, what was a what? worse idea than me posting that Yeah, it was a worse idea for YouTube to not do anything in the first place. How do you, I think that was, figure a, that? well, uh, it's like, you've got, he, he's posting videos, bragging and showing the proof that he doxed my family. Right. And I sent that to YouTube and and they did nothing. Yeah, that was they had an opportunity to do the right thing and they chose not to. And obviously it's like I'm fucking I'm I'm well, pissed you're, you're, and I'm upset you're and I'm. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also like trying to make light of it. Like like I don't post selfies to my Twitter ever. And I just I always I posted like the dumbest pictures I could yeah, of me, yeah. <laughs> you know, like like look at that. I look like a straight up fucking goober. Well, I think that any reasonable person would look at what you're saying here and assume that it's satire or you don't really mean it. I I, yeah, I feel I mean, like they, they didn't say anything about the uh, the violence against protected groups. I feel like that one was, a, you know, that's a little bit it's harder. A yeah, or that's. Yeah, if you look at that one, it's like violence against protected groups. Wow, that's that's kind of extreme. <laughs> well, I, I saw this and I looked at YouTube's uh, YouTube's own because, of course, it's, it's June and everybody knows what that means. It's it's Pride Month. And so uh, YouTube has on their banner here uh, come through for pride. And I just find it to be kind of ironic that the three people that um, are on the YouTube thumbnail here or head, headline here uh, would be dead if it's up to quantum. It, yeah, or uh, or yeah. locked away, or yeah, or something, or, you know, or getting that, or assaulted treatment. in public, something or... crazy. Oh yeah, that's right, because he made the tweet about, or he made the comment, the video comment about that thing. Yeah, and, and again, like going back to the corroboration, he has the comment in the video feed mm -hmm. on that video, and then we have the Facebook post that he made, and then it's like so everything just kind of corroborates itself. And quite frankly, I'm I'm tired of doing the investigation for YouTube, you know. Well, what I find to be really weird is that YouTube didn't, uh, I'm assuming they didn't view the Wayback Machine as permissible evidence, but it was actually used as supplementary evidence in the Johnny Depp versus Amber, Horde, Amber Heard uh, court case. It, it was, yeah, yeah, it was I mean, literally used as supplementary evidence in an in American court case. So you would, you would think, finds, you would on. think, by the way, thanks for having me on. Uh, I mean, it's it's my pleasure. I mean, you make great videos. Yeah. You've you've made them for years, and um, I, I it's the least that I can do. I I see something like this happen, and the reason why I I take such offense to this is that like the copyright system can be abused by anybody, and on top of that, anybody can be a victim of this. It doesn't really matter if you're like a big creator or a small creator or anything like that. So. I, I find this to just be like an example of just such blatant and unfair treatment that, I mean, how can you not say something about it? Yeah, and that, that was a big part of it is like, what happened to Mischief was really shitty. And it just happened yeah. to be by by stroke of luck that I had found a video of Mischief's prior to all of this. And I had started a little group chat with me and a few other smaller YouTubers, mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, were smaller than Quantum at the time. Right. And it just by chance, we happened to be in there, and he shared that he was getting struck with, you know, creators that had, you know, 30,000 subs, 20,000. And so they were able to cover it. But if he didn't have those connections, 
he probably just would have been fucked. None of this would have happened. And who knows if mischief, like if that moment would have planted the seed where mischief just never made videos yeah, again. Just stop, stop, stop streaming or stop making videos. Like it, it's ironic yeah. that you say that because like the same thing happened with me yesterday. Like I had this like weird thing happen and uh, Twitch ended up suspending me for it. And in the process of that, I made a video. I, I tried to appeal it and um, I, I, the appeal was denied effectively. And I make a video about it. And then lo and behold, overnight, my band gets overturned. <laughs> so it's like if that yeah. video didn't get a million views, what would have happened if, it, if, if, if I didn't? Like what, what made them change their mind? And so it always makes me wonder. It's like how many smaller creators just get basically like they don't even get off the landing pad. They just get crushed by something like this with no voice or anything. It yeah, which is what always feels like that's that because I, I sympathize with that. I don't know how Twitch could suspend you, dog. You're like the most reasonable person on the on the internet. <laughs> well, I, I went through the whole time in the video. I, I literally submitted a ban appeal, and it was like a five thousand word limit, and mine was like four thousand two hundred words or something like that. <laughs> like, I, I like I wrote that out, and it took me like twenty minutes. I just fucking boom, there you go. And I even told them, you know, like, if they want more help identifying this stuff, I'm more than willing to help Twitch. And uh, same goes with YouTube, right? It's like if, if they want help, because I think that a lot of bad stuff gets through and they just don't have the awareness to see it. And yeah, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand it either. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I like the idea of because we were we were able to shed light on this whole situation because yeah. we had a small little connected group that you know and he shared like bro this guy just submitted a, a takedown against me and we're like what the fuck yeah uh, i didn't do anything about it until like weeks later i kind of stayed out of it but uh that was when fratanga plays was also in the ch in the chat and he made a video shortly after and then review tech usa picked up the story and what but happened I with review tech usa because obviously quantum was uh not only going after you but him as well yeah he, well he did threaten legal action and i believe copyright strikes against review tech usa never pursued it but he did threaten him mm -hmm. and tried to call him uh like a the p word i don't know if you can say that Pedophile. on twitch yeah uh why did he call yeah. him that uh, because he said he liked vosh oh right okay so, like, by extension of liking someone, you then approve of yeah. all of their ideas. Yep, everything. Okay. Everything. So, if you like someone, you agree with everything they say and everything yeah. they do. That is going to be pretty awkward because, uh, man, I followed Donald <laughs> Trump and Bernie Sanders before he got banned. Oh, so shit. I don't know. I, I don't even know what I'm so thinking. I'm, I'm schizophrenic, apparently. <laughs> yeah fuck okay um so then I'm yeah if you if ahead. you follow donald trump on twitter before he was banned then that automatically means that you liked and agreed with everything he said yeah yeah you hear that who's that I, I if only that was the case i mean a lot of those yeah. people yeah the reply guys to that guy it was crazy and so like it's it's clearly not that's clearly not true and any reasonable person would know that but he used that as an excuse to say those things about him about Re yeah. review tech usa and were those videos where he called him a pedophile were those removed from youtube uh yeah he took them down quantum what he does is he well he hasn't been doing this recently because he's gotten bold so he's kept up all the vi old videos but mm -hmm. at one point he was scared so he he would post a video like i said he had five elden ring videos five of them and yeah. he deleted all of them and then he deleted the videos he made calling Review Tech USA a pedophile, and he deleted the videos on Griffin Gaming. And so he's he's very uh, sneaky. He'll post a video, leave it up for a couple days, and then take it down. And then, you know. So, yeah. And my understanding, though, with that kind of stuff is that YouTube is like, aren't they required by law to keep a record of all of the media and things that were uploaded onto their platform for like 30 days or something. I, I don't really know about this, but I, I've heard about things like this before. Some people say yes, some people say no. It's very hard to say. Yeah, I don't I don't know what they do on the back end for mm -hmm. things, but I I would hope that they had some some way to investigate, you know, like how many copyright disputes has this creator been in and with how many other creators have they had these copyright disputes with? 
And then if you see that pattern of behavior, and then two points make a line. Yeah. And a line goes in a direction. Yeah, I, I feel like that's exactly what it is. And um, YouTube... That's a great quote, by the way. Oh, the like two that. points make a line? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I I feel like, well, that's a really good way to say things, right? Because like, it's kind of like what you said. It's like one per people have pop offs, right? They have pop offs, but it's like, what is the repeated pattern of behavior? And, and I think that's what the main issue is, is. It's the repeated pattern of behavior. That really is an issue, not just the one or two things that he said. And has quantum at this point, like apologized or backed down nope, from any of the never has he never has he made any statements explicitly uh, condemning what he said about like uh, having like gay people killed or shot. Uh, not to my knowledge. He, I mean, he would yeah. he would say like I disavowed my hacked tweets. You know, which, which, is, which is like why would you have to disavow something that you got hacked for? Yeah. Well, Little the odd. funny thing about the repeated pattern of behavior is, mm -hmm. I think in a in a video he posted like within the last week, he's he's saying that uh, he's accusing Review Tech USA of sexually assaulting a woman. You know, so he's still going off whoa, on some of this shit. Whoa, yeah. wait, what? Yeah. Holy I, shit, wait. How I, uh, did, how, I, whoa, how did this happen? I don't know, but uh, like, I can't was... can't believe you do that. I was, yeah, I can't believe Quantum TV would do something like that. <laughs> wow. But I, I, I was watching the video, and then he was saying some stuff, and mm -hmm. that was one of the things, and then I was like, wait, I, I, what? And so I started Googling and, like, Re Review Tech USA, sexual misconduct allegations, and I found nothing. And, like, I couldn't find anything. Anybody else talking about this or anything? And uh, I I should probably reach out to Rich just to be like, what the fuck? Because I'm pretty sure, like, again, he's still going off. Like, Right, so yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, like, if somebody's putting out information like this about you, it's uh, it's just... It's very damaging to your reputation. That's like, for example, why I was concerned about what happened with me yesterday is that, um, you know, I don't want to have my channel get suspended and have the suspension upheld whenever it's something that has to do with like racism, especially for me. And oh, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's disgusting. And so the thing yeah. about it, though, is like even though Quantum fails in his attempts to slander other content creators, mm -hmm. It's like he's still, like, isn't it bad enough that he's trying, that someone with even, like, a 60,000k audience is, is trying to paint people as pedophiles or sexual abusers or, you know, copyright or, like, you know, just all the crazy shit. Like, it's bad enough that he's been trying to do that. So why do you think, like, I, I guess, like, kind of to, to pull a lot of this together is that why do you think YouTube hasn't done anything about it? Uh, pfft. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I I think the big thing is probably like their the way they investigate things mm -hmm. is very bad. It's it's terrible. Uh, uh, that's that's about the only thing I could really come up with. Uh, you could you know I've heard people make some kind of theory that maybe someone really high up at YouTube is like secretly a huge quantum fan yeah. and just agrees with all the things that he says. I mean, but that's kind of crazy to me. So I, uh, stranger I don't, things I don't have know. happened, but it's like whenever you have something where you have such a tremendous mountain of evidence, just indicating one thing is clearly true. You have patterns of behavior that last over the better part of a decade. And somehow all of this stuff is not admissible as evidence yeah and well the thing is like i i've been also compiled a list of of people that youtube mm -hmm. could reach out and, and ask right about their experiences with quantum and and it's like you don't have to take it from just me you could ask griffin gaming you could ask review tech usa tipster Mischief, Mr. Mm -hmm. 4K Upscaler, Stop the FOMO, HDTV Test, Ninjitian, Keep It Classy Tech, Joelster, My Gadgets World, Paul the Tech Giant, like, Be the Installer, like a, a fucking long ass list of people that he's had All interactions of these people with. All people who he's, he's harassed. And, yeah. And like had very negative interactions with. And so, yeah. Quantum has just kind of gone under the radar and they've just ignored this problem. 
And uh, yeah. have you had other people like I saw that there was like one article written about this whole uh, situation. But how many people have like reached out to you to try to get your take on things or your side of things? Oh, I'd say I'd say quite a few, you know, people okay. from small channels or uh, uh, channels with 100K subs, yeah. slightly larger people like you, a uh, couple of news news uh, organizations like one for Dexerto and yeah. one for Daily Dot. So quite a few. I'm kind of I'm picking and choosing so that they're uh, I feel like I, I want to go on a place that I that's it's reputable give you a and that, fair shake. like yeah yeah like Philip DeFranco or you yeah I, I think you, your editors are probably gonna change change this interview and they're gonna make it me look really bad they're gonna of do course, some kind of right? YouTube poop yeah <laughs> yeah it's perfect I mean listen they're working <laughs> overtime all right that's what they do <laughs> and uh, it's just it, it's awful to see this kind of stuff happen because like there are going to be people that will see what happened with quantum and they will feel more confident to either be extremely hateful or to do the same things that he did with like issuing copyright strikes because basically if there's no punishment for it there's really no reason not to do it and because copyright exactly. strikes are such a nuclear option if you copy strike somebody well it's like fuck and like many people, like they can't fight that from like a larger creator either. Yeah, it's it's also just like a waste of YouTube's resources to mm -hmm. investigate these bogus claims. And it's like nobody knows what constitutes copyright abuse on the platform because yeah. it's like, OK, here's this form. And in the form, it says you have you are testifying to the best of your knowledge that you have filled this form out properly under penalty of perjury. Abuse of this might be. Uh, might cause your channel to be terminated or suspended and it's like bro he didn't he's copywriting a video that isn't on youtube like i'm not infringing on your rights if you took the fucking video down in the first place never mind the fair use angle yeah but this has absolutely no effect on the performance of that video so what do you think is going to happen like now that all of this stuff is getting i mean it, it's really started to get very popular a lot of people are talking about it i've been seeing videos obviously like you've received a tremendous amount of support on twitter oh uh, yeah what, and i gotta thank you guys all for that and thanks for it. yeah it's oh man if it's my emotions have been all over the place i'll be like super happy one moment after i post a meme or something and see support and then i see some other channel who's like my my channel was suspended for talking about this and then I get depressed and then I get happy and then I see like like even you had a video that got demonetized, you know, and I'm like, bro, I feel kind of responsible for this. I mean, granted, it's just one video for you, but at the same time, it's like one video that one more video that shouldn't have been demonetized so at all. I actually talked to Keemstar about this. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he hit me up. He's like, what happened with the videos are private. And so my editors had just privated a lot of the videos because they didn't want YouTube to uh to take action uh, against him, against me, and and Keemstar had even covered this in Drama Alert. I'm sure you saw that. I I might have. I, I saw that he covered it on Drama Alert, but I'm not sure if he covered like the uh, like your video getting demonetized. Yeah, I wasn't sure either. But um, I it, it's like listen, some people don't like Keemstar. That's fine. But like, if you don't like Keemstar and you think he's wrong all the time. That's how fucking unilaterally bad this is, is that even he's on the same page with this stuff. Yeah. yeah like, he, he, I mean, like, think about that. Ethan, Ethan Klein reached out to me, and really? it's... Yeah, I find it funny that, like, both he and Keemstar <laughs> are, are, like, these two guys... That alone should be I, evidence. I even said to Ethan, I was like, man, I hope you guys can get get over your beast at some point <laughs> you know i just i know it's like when an unstoppable force beats an immovable object like yeah that, the, that but this shit brings everyone this shit brings everyone together because everyone's like what the fuck and the crazy thing about it is like yeah you know your video got demonetized a couple other yeah. videos have been demonetized some of them have been uh you know that guy whose channel got suspended he got it back but it shouldn't have been suspended in the first place yeah and what i see is i see fear in people's eyes as they talk about this and i see people that are like here's what act man got uh his video taken down for this image of the cucumber and i and i have to blur it out is this nudity like i don't know and then i see other people that are like youtube i'm just uh, like don't don't hit me don't 
don't hit me with this. So you see like this fear in people's eyes and in their in what they're saying as they're covering this issue. And I, that's just crazy to me that someone at YouTube who was responsible for safety on the platform is now invoking fear across it. Oh, yeah, of course. And that's effectively what's happening. And, and they're invoking fear through actual punishment. It's not like they are just completely hands off in this situation because it would have been one thing if, let's say, YouTube was just like, we don't give a fuck, do whatever you want, say whatever you want. We don't want to have anything to do with it. But like, it's another thing for them to effectively punish you and take a side. I, I think that's what the difference yeah. is. Yeah, and also... Um... Oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Well, like, ha have you talked to uh, anybody else at YouTube, uh, like, actually after your channel had been demonetized? Just my partner manager. And did they give you any... What What, what did they say? Well, I mean, a, a lot of stuff. A lot of things that I know I shouldn't say, yeah, don't. you know? Okay, all right, that's fair. But do you feel like <laughs> this is going to be resolved? I, uh, the thing about it is even if I get monetization back, like that's just the first of many steps I think YouTube needs to take to unfuck the situation because that still means that like we don't have an answer on what copyright abuse constitutes on the platform and there's still absolutely no punishment for people like Quantum. Like, and, and I said that, like if, if, Copyright striking me for Elden Ring review is considered a fair request for review, then that means anybody who's made an Elden Ring review is subject to, to copyright strikes. Well, and, and you know anybody what I mean? who features any type of somebody else's content in their channel, not not like a re-upload or anything like that, but just even like a few clips, uh, that would be enough to have them copyright struck. Uh, and for it to be yeah. considered a, a fair way of using it. I, I think also, like, one thing that's a very good indicator is that, I've, as far as I know, we don't have any evidence of Quantum TV copyright striking anyone who has produced content that has his content inside of it that's positively promoting him in a positive light. So he only does yeah. this to people who are promoting him in a negative light. Which implies yes. that this is not something that's being done on the grounds of it being copyright violation. It's something that's being done on the grounds of abuse and to try to shut down discourse. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a false flag operation. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. I mean, as I'm sure Quantum knows about a lot more of those than both of us combined. He seems like that kind of guy. I will say that um, in terms of the people that know... Mm -hmm. to the extent what he's done yeah he knows the most and i know the second most right i have done like i bottom. i put hundreds of hours researching this and producing Jeez. those videos because i feel like it just you know that whole situation with mischief i look at that and i put myself in the shoes of like a few thousand sub content creator and yeah. just like you're you can't make a big stink about it because Especially you just don't have kid. the audience. Yeah, because it's like and he's I mean, sixteen. Yeah, it's like you're sixteen, bro. Like whenever I was sixteen, I would have never even thought to do that. I'd just be like, "Wow, okay, I guess I'll go on Twitch or some other platform." Yeah, I, I guess I'm fucked. Yeah, okay. damn, this sucks. I don't really want to make videos anymore. And that's like not that's not the precedent that YouTube would should want to set. And that's kind of why I like the idea. You know, YouTube had that YouTube heroes thing, but it was super cringe, and, and the way it was uh, uh, marketed was like, yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and shut down other channels you want. But I feel like um, I feel like a small watchdog group that content creators can reach out to and be like, hey, this guy submitted a false copyright strike against me. Then, like, someone in that watchdog group could look over it and decide, okay, maybe I should forward this to YouTube or not. So effectively, and, like, accountability or some sort of check and balance to bad decisions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, like, so that smaller content creators know that there's a chance that they could kind of, like, go up the ladder to, yeah. to get the attention of a bigger content creator who, if the situation is totally fucked, can draw more attention to it. And have, um, have you talked to anybody who was beyond your partner manager at YouTube? No. 
Okay. That is pretty disappointing. I'm just looking through this whole thing. It, uh, it's it's kind of like I, I remember I made a response to I think it was YouTube's tweet. It's like, I, I am just like astonished that this has happened. To be honest, yeah, like it, me it, too. it's still like, whenever I think about it, it's surreal that you could have a person that said and done all these things with such clear evidence of them being the case, and somehow it's it's the other person's fault and uh, i think also like and you would agree with me on this too i am assuming is that you getting demonetized for potentially making a bad tweet is separate from quantum doing anything wrong like these two things can exist independently and also simultaneously yeah i think i think the reasons that they have given for the action they've taken against me, yeah. I feel like are disingenuous at best. Do you, you know? Do you think the, dis the demonetization was a retaliation for you calling out either Quantum or YouTube? I, you know, I can't really say for certain. It's um, hard to say. I just, I feel like the the cucumber image is in the copyright abuse video, and that was all good, and now suddenly it's. It's not good in the dark age of YouTube. Yeah. I, f I just find it extremely interesting that a video titled The Dark Age of YouTube would be taken down because of a cucumber joke. I just find that very, very interesting that that of all reasons, you know, not well, cyberbullying and harassment, not something generic that would be kind of hard for me to argue against. Yeah. But they confirmed it was for unwanted sexualization, which can only mean it was the cucumber. Right. And, and that unwanted sexualization does not extend to quantum talking about, uh, you know, the, the gay sex. Rich being or, a pedophile. Or rich yeah, being it, a pedophile. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that is just incredible. Have you thought about re-uploading it without the cucumber part? Or are you just kind uh, of... I just don't really want to... You don't want to poke the bear? I mean... Yeah, it's, I've thought about making videos or, you know, making videos even though I'm demonetized. I feel mm -hmm. like it's just really demoralizing to be in this position. What's well, also uh, like videos I said, don't get promoted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People don't even but see But also, them. I've been very, uh, like, emotions all over the place, so sometimes I'll feel passionate about making something, and then I'm like, meh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's something that you kind of just, like, cool off and, and see what happens. Yeah. I, I, I oh, but I'll stay on Twitter, man. You know, uh, oh, one, on one thing I will say, one thing I will say is, as I've been, you know, working through this, I realize that I, I'm not going to be intimidated or silenced just because they have the carrot on the stick in front of me, like, you want your monetization back, don't you? Yeah, don't you? Jingling the keys in front of me. Yeah, you want it back, don't you? Okay, well then just, like, shut up and be quiet about all of this. It's like... No, you guys wronged me. So if you don't give this back, that that's you fucking up. So I'm not going to cave into like your demands or your intimidation tactics just because you're jangling the keys in front of me. It's like, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, of course. And also, like, I'm surprised that more... To be honest with you, I I'm really surprised that like more large, like large scale publications haven't picked up the fact that YouTube is effectively protecting somebody who has wished death on uh, gay people or people that are, you know, like any of the LGBT, et cetera, uh, during Pride Month. Yeah, and they're, that's, they're that's like a, that's a that's, bad brand image for them. That, that's so that, fucking that looks, bad for them. Yeah, it looks bad, you it know? It looks terrible. And, it's like such an open and shut case. Here's the thing. Yeah. Even, even if... Even if you are super, super free speech and you're and you're not in favor of silencing or shutting down people, uh, even if they say terrible, terrible things, wishing yeah, yeah. death on people, even if you remove the whole hate speech angle and let's just say he's innocent for all of that, we still have the child safety policy, the promoting harmful and dangerous acts. We still have the fact that he's scamming people using his YouTube channel, harassment and cyberbullying and copyright abuse. It's like, even if you take any one of these things out of the situation, a doxing, ban evasion, yeah. you take the hate <laughs> speech out, there's there's eight other Somebody things to get them so. for. Yeah. Yeah, I find that to be very true, too, is that, um, you know, even if you completely hand wave all of that, 
Uh, there's a dozen other things that are just as bad. And it's like he's basically treating the TOS like a to-do list. Yeah. Dude, I love the thing that you said. Uh, I think on one of your videos, you were like, one thing that you can commend him for is just the will to survive. I know. It's like, <laughs> like it, it's like, oh, well, everything that was said about me was fake. Everybody. And it's like, does anybody ever wonder, right? You're a big part of like, you know, the tech community, audio video community. How is it that like you keep getting hacked? <laughs> like i mean aren't you supposed to be like one of the smart guys with computers yeah. and stuff like how do you keep getting that's hacked? a disqualifier yeah. he's disqualified like, it, yeah it's you also crazy. saw the part in the in the dark age where like i showed his audio and it's like yeah it's like bro how like imagine if i came onto your stream and i just and i just talked to you like this for the whole time oh yeah it's great my, yeah, does it sound pretty great? Yeah, it sounds like a meeting. Whenever you have a meeting with like a partner or something, and like they don't really do a lot of internet stuff, it's like the marketing department. And so, yeah, they've got one mic and it's a big boardroom, and you can't hear <laughs> half the people. Yeah, I'm fully aware of that. Yeah. It's like, dude, you, you call yourself a master TV calibrator. You are in the AV community, and you can't take 40 seconds to balance your fucking audio properly, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, you t with the left and the right audio thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I do really hope, though, that, like, more people pick this up and start talking about it because, um, you know, whenever I, I saw this happen, I, I thought of the, um, the old, uh, you know, we are all Spartacus, we're all act man, right? This could happen to anybody. <laughs> this could be any of us in this situation where basically YouTube just – decides to cherry pick things against us and um completely ignore their own rules and that's a very that's that's what's scary so at first once i got demonetized and i put a bunch of tweets out and i was fired up yeah. i kind of like calmed down a bit and i was gonna take a, a break but then i saw that other channels were being affected by this and right like that i was like okay this is now this is super yeah. fucked because it seems like the algorithm has been changed to further silence discussion on this topic or demonetize videos that talk about it. Right. And that's totally fucked. I cannot believe that somebody or a group of people at YouTube could could make decisions that now threaten everyone on the platform or at least make everyone feel like their channel is threatened. A channel with 1.5 million subscribers just being like yeeted like that, it's yeah. like for for a cucumber and for a sat a satirical joke that was d deleted five hours after it was posted. They asked me to delete the tweet, and I did, and I thought that would be the end of it. I yeah. don't think anybody prior to me deleting that tweet looked at it and said this is a legitimate threat. Yeah, he I... really wants to dox people at YouTube. It's like, no, no, it was he, it was a bad decision, but it was clearly not serious. Yeah, yeah, it, I, I know it was mean. a decision made out of frustration and out of like just sheer baffle i don't know if bafflement well, it, it's is, a decision is made a word of, what it felt to me is it was almost a decision made of uh d out of derangement you know what i mean yeah like, I, I, think I felt like it. i felt like those tweets made made points though it's like i'm going to use my youtube channel to promote hate speech that advocates mm -hmm. for violence against protected groups this is okay by youtube's new standards like it's very clearly like over the top and, and the part of that is to convey the point that they're not doing shit about this it is just crazy yeah basically like you're 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 taking it to its logical it's like um uh a modest proposal right and uh instead of eating food you eat the kids or something like that sure uh, i i understand it yeah you're you're taking it to its logical extreme because clearly they don't care about their own rules uh, yeah. i think meanwhile edp <laughs> meanwhile you EDP saw that? is back yeah, I just can't believe it. We're How like, what the fuck? Back? And they're and what they're focused this? on me. Yeah, and it's, me of all people. Like, and it's like also, it, this has been ten days. So, I just, oh my god, man. You oh know what I will say? Fifteen uh, about off. about ban evasion. Yeah. I feel like I feel like there should be some kind of courtesy. Like, let's say let's say Leafy was banned. Right, sure. he was banned. And let's say he wanted to come back a year later, yeah. two years later, or whatever. And YouTube's like, okay, well, it's been a while. You can come back. Just don't do the same shit that we banned you for. And if he didn't and adjusted just to the new rules, again. then you can yeah, then you can not. stay. Yeah. I don't see how I that's feel so like, hard. I'd be completely fine with that. It's been a while. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So I feel like, but the thing with quantum is it's like, okay, no, you're still the same person that f thinks, you know, the gays are out to get you. <laughs> uh, that's why I had a problem with the thumbnail. I can almost fucking guarantee it. Yeah, because exactly. You think about it. It's not all these other attacks on his character. It's that don't you Photoshop anything dick shaped in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not gay. I'm a Christian straight man, and they target yeah. that as something bad or offensive. So uh, let me let's just kind of like uh, let's kind of bring all this together. Where do you did see you guys like did what? you guys like the the tactical gays edit? I thought that was just, pretty good. It was just too fucking much, man. Oh, I just can't <laughs> believe it. It's just it just gets more and more ridiculous. Like I remember reading some of those Facebook posts and thinking to myself, I'm like, there's no way this is real. Like. This has got to be like photoshopped or like fake or something like no, no real person would say this. And no, little did you know <laughs> that wasn't even the beginning. Yeah. Wh where do you where do you see things going now? Well, uh, in my yeah. in my best case scenario, I think I get my monetization back. I hope the videos that were arbitrarily age restricted are no longer age restricted. I hope that everyone else's videos are remonetized. Yours, Review Tech USA's, Fratangas, all those people. Um, I hope Quantum TV is banned. All of his channels are banned, and we create some type of watchdog group to look out for him. And if anybody gets wind of him creating a second channel, we forward that to YouTube, and he's yeeted. It's like so the we leave Belmonts and Dracula. Okay. Yeah, we leave no quarter for him to come back. Yeah. I also hope that copyright abuse, that new policies are enacted to actually punish people that's that abuse DMCA's. One. Yeah. That's a big one. And I because I don't I don't want like witch hunts to become the norm on YouTube. And that's not what this is. This is like someone who's utter poison to the website. So I, I hope there is policy reforms in the future. And that the people responsible for making all of the terrible decisions at YouTube are investigated internally there. I hope that YouTube and the people that know what they're doing at the website investigate the people that made the decisions that led to this current predicament. I think that's Examine a really good how point. we got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like it's like How did you, we get here? If you fix this problem, who cares about getting rid of one of the golden eggs if you can't figure out why there's the goose? Yeah, exactly. No, I understand that a hundred percent. Like how how was all of this shit overlooked in their three investigations into the matter? So what are you gonna do next? Well, I suppose I'll I'll um just kinda keep fighting the, the good fight. Okay. and advocating for better policies on YouTube and just kind of hanging out and uh I'll probably be streaming on Twitch more. Great. Uh Yeah, just <laughs> It's funny. I was like I was thinking to myself. I was like, "Damn, I and here I thought my Twitch would be the one taken down for some arbitrary reason." <laughs> it surprised me too because yeah, Twitch is much more well known as a uh, as one of those places that it's kind of like those are the kinds of uh like all the time people get banned on Twitch for like stupid stuff or whatever and you really usually hear about YouTube just not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, yeah, guys, that's uh, that's Actman's Twitch. So uh, if he goes live later oh, thank on or whatever, you. of course, man. And, uh, yeah, and make sure to give him some support. Obviously, this sucks. Like, just keep it in mind. It's like, um, you know, this this was his, his job, right? I mean, you did YouTube professionally. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so they just decided, they're like, yeah, we're not going to pay you anymore. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a big professionally, deal. Professionally, maybe. I don't know. That might be a stretch. Yeah, I, I can say <laughs> the same thing with my stream. Don't worry about it. I, I agree with you. So, do you have any come, other? Go ahead. I, how come you only wear white shirts? Um, I don't. But basically, what happened is all the other shirts got dirty, and I went to Target and I bought a six pack of Hanes V neck uh, larger. Well, I think it's large, extra large uh, t shirts, and I just wear that. I, I think I'm I'm past two of the t shirts, and so it's been like two months. So I should be good until almost the end of the year. I love I love the simplicity of it because every time I, I would put like a clip of you in yeah. uh, 
one of the videos saying something, your chat would just be like, same shirt, same shirt. I've thought about, <laughs> I, I think that maybe whenever I play Final Fantasy, I will change my shirt and actually wear something different for at least a day. But Just wear a black shirt. Yeah, yeah, just exactly. The, when you're like in a bad mood or something, wear a black shirt and then your chat's just going to be... Well, it's, it's like you're a cartoon character, right? Because I'm always wearing the same exact stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like Ed and Eddie, you know, they always wear the same stuff every time. And it's the same thing, I guess. Yeah, the yeah that's thing. why it was so it was so bizarre to see you, like, standing up somewhere with, like, a, the blazer a on? nice outfit yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, that didn't last. It's okay. We're back down to uh, sweatpants <laughs> and uh, the same white T-shirt that's been sweated oh. in for weeks. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in sweatpants and a, and a black shirt. Thug life. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, well, I'm really glad to uh, I'm glad to see at least you're in good spirits and you haven't let this like kind of fuck you over because I've seen other people that have had things like this happen to them and like in no in, in no way to like play it down. It fucks with people's heads. It, it does yeah. a lot. And it sucks. Yeah. So even even if everything good happens after this, yeah, you know, I, I'd, I'd also I think a at some point, a public apology from YouTube could go a long way. I would respond really well to that. Or an explanation. Uh, I think that they yeah. should. I don't think that they'll probably apologize to you because of, like, the doxing thing. But I think that they should make a statement about quantum. Yeah. I think that's a fair, that's a fair thing to assume. Especially with, like, letting such, uh, you know, blatant... Uh, blatant behavior just completely go un unpunished for so long. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean it's it's really cool. I mean like there's always a a bright side to everything. Yeah. So it I mean but at the same time it, let's say everything goes back to normal, I'm still going to have like some weird shit in my head. I was talking to totally man. Yeah, I was talking to totally not Mark. You remember his situation? Oh fuck. What was that? He had uh let me just totally uh Mark so let me just see how many videos he had taken down. Oh my god. Yeah, he had 150 videos taken down because of Toei Animation. Uh, I all see. in like one day. Yeah. yeah. So I, I talked to him because it was a very similar situation of like, yeah, hey, let's start a support group because we're both getting <laughs> fucked in different ways. Yeah. Well, I, I'm but sure I, that he probably understood that all too well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's for two very different reasons. But but the similar kind of effect, like one day your livelihood is just just, just the axe done, comes down. Period. Yeah. But something that he told me is uh, he was kind of saying, like, you know, I would be lying if I said things went back to normal after that. Yeah. Because he's like probably always watching his back. He's probably not showing the content in the same way that he would want to, because it's like you never know what's going to happen, what's going to go wrong. Yeah, I mean, I might, I might be walking in the grocery store one day and I see a cucumber and I just flinch. Reminds you, you know? yeah, PTSD. I, I might just flinch and and curl yeah. up in a ball. <laughs> yeah, it sucks, man. It really does. I mean, I just hope that like YouTube, I hope that that somebody like a reasonable, rational person at YouTube or a group of them looks at the situation just with a level head, and they just go yeah. through the evidence. And they make a decision on it. because And they make the right decision. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think it's so obvious that... It's so obvious that, you know, something needs to be done about this. And I'm amazed that it hasn't been, to be honest. Like, I, I'm just, as I said, have you thought about suing YouTube? I mean, you think about all kinds of things yeah, of when course. you're in, in a position. It's a good point. I mean, you, you consider every angle. Your mind's kind of jumping all over the place. Do I... Do I, you know, start promoting my Patreon? Do I start yeah. going to Twitch? Do I, like, do I risk uploading to my second channel? Do I right. try uploading to the main channel? What Do I pursue legal action? Do I contact an attorney? What do I do? The, also, the thing about this that that is kind of scary, uh, what will happen, what will Quantum do if and when all his shit gets deleted? You know what I mean? And with a person who's not afraid to call your parent, that's something that's in the back of your mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, think like, that's unreasonable at all. Like, you know, that's another thing is I've in some ways I feel like I'm putting me and my family at risk by pursuing this and that's yeah. also like a 
kind of a that's a very bizarre feeling to have but at the same time it's like i feel like this is the right thing to do you know i love yeah. youtube and i've been on the platform for so long and i and i love so many things about it and i want it to be the best place it can be i like it's more free nature but also think problematic people should should the problematic people threaten its free spirited nature well yeah of course because then it just turns into a place where you can just get bullied out for doing nothing wrong and also like especially whenever the tools that are supposed to protect people are used as weapons yeah yeah exactly Plowshares you know to swords i do one thing i really do like about this whole situation is not only the opportunity to like talk to you or other people but just to see the community come together and and agree on something you know like all the people that normally disagree on everything else, <laughs> they're, they're coming together. Yeah. Getting Ethan Klein and Keemstar on the same page with something? Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, ain't that, ain't that something? I, I know, man. I, I certainly do. Well, I, I want to say before, because before, I'm going to get get done with a few other things too. But before I do that, I oh, want to yeah. say, uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, let, let, let people know. Um. Well, just thanks, thanks for all the support. And uh, honestly, I, I want to say that I love, I love watching your reactions to my videos because it allows me to like live vicariously through people's reactions to it. Okay. And I love seeing, I love seeing how your chat reacts to my videos. And sometimes I'll like rewatch certain parts that are. Like, that are whenever you I tell do a that good shit. joke and you see all the people yeah. megaloing, be like, yeah, that was a yeah, good one, yeah. wasn't it? Or I see your reaction, like. Um, yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, I, I love seeing that. I love living vicariously through those those videos. Well, thanks. sometimes I'm like, damn, I have a I have a standard to uphold now because you know what? What if he reacts to my video again? What if it's not up to par? Oh, yeah, man, yeah, you know? of course, right? The standards, yeah, it's like, oh man, like you can't make an L video now. You've got to double yeah, check. Yeah, no. It. Well, I don't think you need to worry about that, man. It's been many years, and you've been popping out with some really good videos, so I'm not worried about that at all. So thanks a lot for those. I appreciate it. They're great. Yeah. Thanks for the thanks for the good, high-quality reactions and input, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and, it, I, uh, and I look forward to copyright striking you in the future. Well, okay. That sounds good. And according to YouTube, <laughs> you'll be totally fine to do so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, and uh, I really hope that this gets taken care of. I, I, I do. It's just outrageous to me absolutely outrageous. yeah thanks thanks for having me on and uh have a great rest of your stream and maybe someday we'll do some 1v1s in elton ring or something i'm actually down for that man yeah i'll let you know all right i'll see you later. all right yeah peace see you dude all right that was good that was pretty good